So you have yourself a game tonight and you don't know if you have enough time to print out a model. You're just a little bit scared to go past that general 30 to 60 millimeters a second and you want to just push the limits to find out if you can get a model on your table tonight. Well today we're diving into it. Hey, I'm Jester from Jester's 3D Tabletop Gaming and welcome to the channel. Today we're looking at the Earth Golem, a model by Rocket Pig Games. Definitely head over and check out their Patreon after because it's pretty cool. So generally when I'm printing with my Creality CR10, I'm usually printing at under 60 millimeters a second. 30 is my comfort zone, but uh, I wanted to find out what I was able to get away with and still have to be worthy for the tabletop experience. So the first print speed that I did was 30 millimeters a second, which is my general print speed that I use for the vast majority of models that I print. At 0.2 layer height, I gotta say that this thing turned out pretty good. This model was printed in five and a half hours. Pretty standard, can't complain. So let's see what happens when we increase that to 60 millimeters a second. Well, first of all, our print speed definitely increases to five hours. You can shave yourself a half an hour right there. Once again, printed at 0.2 layer height. Going forward, I start to adjust the print acceleration and the print jerk to compensate for any of the faster movements. If you really want to shave off some time for your print, this is where I found the biggest difference. Jumping to the 80 millimeters a second, we found ourselves a two hour difference in print speed. So if you're looking to find that happy medium to be able to get a model on your table quick as possible, I'd say 80 was the Biggest jump where you're gonna see the print quality be where you want it to be and the print speed be just as good But at the same time when it came to painting There was a degradation in the the lines and the details I had to start referencing the first model when it came to painting in order to really uh, Judge the lines to be able to paint properly jumping up to 120 millimeters a second once again increased the jerk and the print acceleration to compensate and we had ourselves a print time of three hours. The model itself is starting to look a little bit rough, but once you slap some paint onto it, which we'll show you here in a moment, it's really not that bad. And last on this list is 150 millimeters a second. My Creality CR10 was cruising, and it was absolute delight to witness. This print topped in at three hours, just like the 120 millimeters a second. There really wasn't much of a difference in time. It was down to a couple minutes in the long run. So now that we've had a chance to look at the models unpainted, what we really all care about is what these models look like painted, because by the time you get some paint on these fantastic little models, that's when the details really shine and emerge and a lot of those flaws start to get buried and you just don't notice them as much. So we're gonna take a little bit of a look at these all beautifully painted. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say, it's actually it's rather hard to tell the difference between the quality of the first to the last. They blended together so well, I, I must admit that painting them, like I said, that some of the detail was kind of hard to determine where I should be painting, but by the time you have the paint slathered onto that thing, it, it looks good. From a tabletop standard, if you're looking to get a model onto the table in like two and a half hours less time than you normally are, because you've got yourself a game that night, this might be the method for you to check out. These are just my findings. There definitely might be a different mileage out there, or different variants with your printer. But I know I definitely had a fun time trying to test the limits with my printer and find out how much time I should, could shave off printing a miniature. And it was a fun little experiment. And now I've got myself five earth golems that I can definitely throw into a wicked encounter and have people scratching their heads trying to figure out how they're going to deal with them. Plus I feel like I did a pretty good job painting them up as well. So if you're curious how I painted these models, which is very simple, I'll give you a brief explanation of the paints that I used. To paint these wonderful earth golems I slapped on a layer of chaos black. Then I definitely got them all nicely primed with Eschen Gray Citadel paint. To get some of those finer details, I dry brushed on a little bit of Dawnstone. The trees just needed a little bit of Burnt Umber by Vallejo. Bam! Dry brushed on a little shoot Ushabdi Bone. Ushabdi Ushabdi Bone Bone Bone. For those eye details, just a little bit of flat red. And to really make them pop, a little bit of vermilion. 
and then a generous amount of Agrax Earthshade, the holy grail of all paints. This was definitely a fun little experiment to try. If you were to dabble around with the layer heights and the print speeds, I'm sure you could get yourself a very quick model on the table if need be. You just have to ask yourself, are you willing to sacrifice quality? Do you really need that model on the table? Two hours sooner? You might, you never know. Cause when it comes down to gaming, it's always spur of the moment. You might not know if there's gonna be a game right meow. Right meow. Well, anyhow, I had myself an absolutely good time. I hope you had a good time, and until the next time, bye bye now. But wait! Once again, we've got some videos here and here. You can go and check them out. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Hey, bye bye now!